Hi and welcome to the breadboard. This is the second video in a series on the Lee Maker guitar. So what I want to show you is how to go from this on an HDMI screen with a Debian Linux running on the Lee Maker guitar to being able to run it on an LCD display. And all it's going to take is basically three steps and a reboot. So let's get started. Right now we have the standard Liman 2 image installed using the Jesse version and it's running on the HDMI screen which is the basic default. Now I'm going to show you how to switch it over and get it up on an LCD display using the standard LeeMaker 7 inch LCD. Just opened a WinSCP session on the LeeMaker guitar and I am in a folder which you'll find from the root under slash media slash LeeMaker slash miss MISC. And in here you'll see a file called kernel.dtb. This is a device tree um, binary file that describes a lot of the configuration for the Lee Maker guitar on PowerUp. And what we've got to do is edit this. The trouble is, this is a binary file, not a text one. If I have a look in this right now, as you can see, it's not really something you can edit um, with an editor. So we've got to convert it. So what we need to do is open a terminal session. So we'll just do that. And we have to install um, some software to allow us to convert the file into an editable format. And this is the DTC compiler. And the command for that is sudo apt-get install device tree compiler. You just uh, type that in, press enter, put in the password for the uh, root, which is LeeMaker by default, and it just goes in. In my case, I had already installed it, um, which means it tells me it doesn't need to upgrade. If you've never done it before, then it'll just install it and you'll be done there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to convert that DTB file into a DTS file. So in order to do that, we need to run the DTC command that we've just installed. And the format for that command is right here. You type DTC space dash capital I for input, DTB dash capital O for output, DTS. In the output file, we're going to put in the same folder. So you don't need sudo permissions or anything like that. Uh, we're going to call it kernel.dts. And um, the input file is going to be media leemaker miscellaneous kernel.dtb. You just hit enter. Just takes a fraction of a second to run. And now if I go refresh the folder, we'll find we now have a DTS file. Now if we open this in an editor, I can do this right from, DT, uh, from WinSCP. Um, if you want to use Nano or some other editor, be, feel free to do so. It doesn't matter which one you use. And if you scroll down, um, somewhere near the end is a section that deals with the frame buffer. I'm almost there. There. Now you can just search for frame buffer or you can search for HDMI until you find it. And the only thing you've got to do to make this thing work with an LCD display is change HDMI to LCD, save the file, Okay, now that I've uh, edited the file, I just need to convert it back into a DTB. So we're using the reverse command this time, still, still with the DTC compiler, the device tree compiler. But this time the input is a DTS and the output is a DTB. Just so we finished compiling, uh, so we've now finished editing the file. We just got to convert it back into a DTB. So we just need to run the reverse command. So that's DTC dash input DTS and output DTB. Uh, everything else, uh, obviously, you know, your output file is a DTB this time. And we just press enter, it takes a fraction, and that's done. And if we look in the folder now and look, we'll see that the DTB is now a slightly later time than the DTS. So that's ready to go. And all we need to do now is simply reboot the computer and it should pick up on the LCD, which as you can see has been sitting in the window here, just black right now. So I'm just going to do the reboot and it should come up on the display. Now I can't have three screens on right now so because I've only got one camera. Uh, but the main HDMI screen is still showing the full screen, Lee Maker logo and everything else as a normal desktop. As soon as I hit reboot, it's going to obviously shut down and restart. And what will happen is it'll start to load on the HDMI because that's what it 
is using for its default, but it's going to quickly reboot again once it sees that change in device tree. Uh, make the changes and then reboot to come up on the LCD display. So I'm hitting it now. You'll hear the beep when it uh, goes down. There we go. So it's gone down. It's just booted up a little bit on the HDMI and it's gone away. Now it's back to the LCD again. And as you can see there, it's starting to do things. And it should. It's just got the logo Lee Maker up on the HDMI, which is always going to happen. But it should now flip back to the LCD display. There we go. And start booting up on the LCD. Quite happily. And there we have it. Now this also includes the touch screen is working. So I can go down here and open, say, Ice Weasel. Guess I'm not just not giving it long enough. And there we go. So we just you can open Ice Weasel. So you can see that the uh, touch screen is working nicely. We just do a random search. I guess it doesn't want to search from that. As you can see here, I've, I'm not using a keyboard on this at all. Um, I'm just using the touchpad, touchscreen on it. So working quite nicely. Now that's taking it back to there. So what you've got now in the uh, miscellaneous folder here is you've got a DTS and a DTB. Anytime you want to flip back to HDMI again, all you have to do is open up the DTS, go back down to the place where we edited it to um, where we put in LCD right here on the frame buffer, change that to say HDMI again, uh, save it, run that script again to go from DTS back to um, DTB. Sorry, that's a stale because we had to reboot. So let me just open another one. And that's this command. So DTC dash input DTS dash output DTB. Give it the folder name. And as long as that updated DTB file, kernel.dtb, is in the miscellaneous folder um, under Media Leemaker, when you reboot, it'll pick up the changes. So you can quite easily flip between LCD and HDMI. And if you wanted to, you could even write a simple little script to do it. You don't need root permissions or anything else like that. So that's pretty much it. Um, I know it was going to be short and sweet, and as you can see, it is. So I hope you enjoyed that, and it's a lot simpler than what the website seems to be making out. And um, that's pretty much it. So uh, next video is going to be on um, some Node-RED, so that'll be in a few days' time. I'll uh, have a video out that shows you how to install Node-RED, put in some add-ons, and get some um, lights flashing. I can give you a... Um, minor sample of that right now just to show you what we're going to end up with. Um, let me just adjust the camera a little bit. So the it's pointing to these lights here which I've got hooked up to some of the GPIO pins. I do have a couple of commands just to run um, to enable the GPIO. Um, Node Red on this one currently is actually installed, but that's for another video. I've just been cleaning up a few things, so I'm going to. Um, so we just need to run a couple of scripts that I created. And I'll provide all the scripts as well. And there you go. So Node Red was already running, and it was thinking it was it was getting errors in the background because the uh, GPIO pins had not been set up. Um, LeeMaker does have a wiring Pi, but it, they don't have a Node-RED uh, instance of it at the moment. So you can still use Node-RED and control the GPIO and the SPI and everything else, but you have to use the um, function. So you write little JavaScript pieces of code or uh, execs, so it's the same as doing it from the command line, but within Node-RED. And this is just using a one-second timer to toggle a couple of lights. Anyway, I'm going to uh, describe what happens with that in another video in a few days. As I said, I'm just cleaning up the scripts to make sure that things that don't work aren't included and on, only have it nice and straightforward so I don't confuse any of the viewers trying to get things in that um, simply don't work at the moment. Uh, anyway, that's it for now. Hope, As I said, hope you enjoyed it, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and if you don't, well, you don't have to, but that's how easy it is to get the LCD display up and running on the Lee Maker guitar. So, 
see you again soon.